I want to go ahead and create a new document. Go to File, New. This new document, I want it to be a print document. And I want it to be on inches since I, since I understand inches. So it's print, inches, and it has a color mode of CMYK and a PPA of 300. That's the important part about creating your logo. And we created it for print at the beginning. Next, I'm going to go ahead and fit this into a more manageable window. So I'm going to go ahead and resize my window and then double click on the hand tool on the toolbar down here. Now that I have that, I'm going to go ahead and show you how to create a shape. To create a shape, you go to the rectangle tool. You choose the shape that you want. In this case, I'm going to choose a start tool. And then make the start by clicking and holding and going away from it. The default feel is white and the default stroke is black. If I wanted to change the feel, I click here and change the feel. If I wanted to change the stroke, I would click here and change the stroke. And when you walk and when you click away, first you need to go ahead and click the arrow. And then click away. Now you will see that this start has definitely a stroke and a feel. Now if you don't believe me, you can go ahead and zoom in with your zoom tool. The zoom tool is down here on the toolbar. I'm going to go ahead and click on it. And I'm going to go ahead and zoom into one of its areas. Click on my black arrow, click away, and now you can definitely see there's a stroke, the border, or the path, and then a feel. F-I-L-L. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move this a little bit higher so you guys can see this entirely well. Okay, I'm going to double click on my little hand tools, which brings me to zoom out, and I'm going to make another shape. Click on the shape, select my polygon tool. This time I'm going to click once inside here. It's going to ask me, okay, it's a polygon tool, so how many sides you want? I'm going to go ahead and select five. Okay, so it gives me a pentagon, which I can have it have a different feel and a different stroke. And click on my selection tool. Now, because I created this element last, this element is in front of the star. I can put the star in front of that element by selecting the star with my black arrow, right clicking, and then going to arrange to front. That will go ahead and bring the element to the front. Okay. You can also change the path. But for that, I need to show you the drawing tool or the pen tool. So I'm going to click on the pen tool on the toolbar, then click. And if you just click a straight line, it will make a straight line. So I'm going to go ahead and make a triangle. Make sure to always close the path so you have a full path. But you can also make curves. To make curves, you can click, hold. Then as you hold, you can pivot the curve upwards if you want the curve downwards or downwards if you want the curve upwards. So I'm going to go ahead and pivot upwards so I can have my curve downwards. Click down here and make sure that if you finish your loop. Then click on my arrow. This will allow me to move it. So if I move it, I'll place it here and I can change the color. and then click away from it, and there you have it. To delete objects, you click on them and press the delete key. To manipulate the point of each path, you can select the direct select tool, which is the white arrow, and then you're gonna go right at the anchor point, and you're gonna go ahead and click once. By clicking on the, on the anchor point that you wanna move, you can click, hold, and then distort those corners. So you can have a shape that looks like this. Again, I clicked on the symbol or the path that I wanted. Click on my direct select tool. And then I clicked on the anchor, which made all these kind of white, which allows me to, to manipulate them, stretch them, 
if I want to make a curve I can click that point and go here to a curve and that will give you a curve if I want to make it straight you can go to the point and then make it straight and that will give you a straight okay so I'm going to show you next the tracing tool in Illustrator for this I went to the web and I found a vector image I want to trace now before you, I show you this, make sure that you ask him permission or you buy it or if you're going to go ahead and buy it and actually use it for something other than instructional purposes, make sure you don't steal by this technique, okay? I'm going to go ahead and click Light Trace and it will go ahead and do a pass, but I don't like that. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the pull down menu underneath, select Default, which does a lot better trace. Then I'm going to click the Live Paint button, which will go ahead and make paths out of what I have in front of me, which is a trace image. Then I can select the black arrow, double click on the image, and as I double click on the image, I can right click on Group, which will go ahead and give me the ability of take away different parts. I'm going to take away the background. I'm simply selecting what I don't want and hitting delete. You can also use a lasso tool to select items you don't want and then delete them. Okay, once I'm done, I'm going to click on this button up here on the upper left hand side that says layer one. I'm going to select it again and double click so I can really get in there. And now I can click each and one of the paths either with a select direct tool so that if I want to go ahead and change the color, I may be able to do so. If I want to go ahead and change the path like that, then I may be able to do so. You can also go back to layer one and use your eraser. You can select your eraser by clicking on your eraser and then if you want to change the settings, double click on the eraser and change the diameter and how do you want it to erase. I just changed the diameter, the diameter and I'm going to go ahead and delete this portion next I am going to show you how to use a text tool so click on the T on the toolbox and I'm gonna click and hold and draw an area where I wanna type then I'm gonna change the settings for my size I'm gonna select 72 points I'm also gonna change the font to something else now I can type if I select it and the number is too small for me let's say I wanted to make it bigger but it's not shown here I can actually type it so I'm gonna go ahead and type 300 that's a little bit better now this is text I can edit the text I can go back to text I can do a lot of things with it I can center it I can change the font I can change the color of the font but one of the most interesting things about this is to be able to convert it to an image to do that I go to type create outlines and what that does once you ungroup them right click ungroup is that you can move each one of these independently just like any drawing out there and if you do that then you're able to do something more interesting like squish them all together if you wanted to do that or rearrange them this is if you're going to be using your initials as a logo I suppose and you can also recolor them by going to the path color and color them whatever it is the color that you want and also since these are paths now you can go ahead and change it you can change the path if you recall by selecting the direct selection tool clicking on one of those little handlebars that I call I, I call and then you can distort it. You can then create kind of like your own font if you wanted to. Okay, so now that I've shown you how to distort text and make it an outline, you might want to know about a website that allows you to get fonts uh, for free. Thefont.com and what they have in there is they have a whole bunch of interesting fonts that you might want to borrow. If you scroll down, you'll see the feature fonts. But if you go and click on one of these, a comic, 
you are able to actually type where it says custom preview. And if you wanted to look at this large, you can click submit. And then whatever font you use here, say something you guys actually able to read. I'm going to go ahead and select medieval. And this is their version of my name as medieval. And what you can do is you can select that by right clicking, copying the image, or you can also do the snapshot on your computer, select the region that you want. At this point, I would go ahead and right click on it, open link in new window, then right click on it again and select, let me go ahead and move this and select view background image which will give me the picture that I can then right click and copy which I can paste into Illustrator which I can then live trace which I can then click live paint which will give me the paths which I can double click on it and then allow me to select individual parts of the lettering so if I wanted to go ahead and select just the A, I select the A, and then just the A moves. If I wanted to select just the L and delete everything else, I would select anything that is around that, except the L's, and then I can go ahead and select the S and locate it wherever I want it. And whatever I don't want, I will go ahead and delete as I select it, go back to layer one, and then using the direct select tool or the black arrow, you can move it as one item. So go and make your logo.